Hey, welcome to Water Cooler. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. We missed you. And if you're new here, we welcome you. And we look forward to missing you when we're not speaking to you. Thank you uh, again. Uh, you know the show goes. I Chris Ox, want to kick it with my former Cruel Digital Buds, Philly Style, with me today all the way in Austin, Texas. And happy belated. It's Mr. Matt Fondelier. Hey, brother. Hi, Matt. Hey, buddy. And um, we're going to do a little Shay this uh, today as well. And Some I mean, birthday Shay? Birthday Shay. And then all the way in Orange County, California, it's Gary Smith. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. And then all the way to North Hollywood, California, we got Mike Dawson. Yeah, dude. Happy belated. Right on, man. Thank you. Happy almost, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm six months away for me. Yeah, yeah Dawson. That's been- perfect. <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, I remember. Yep. By Matt's yep. count, that's You're still this year, You're so it's there. all good. Oh, nope. for some reason, I thought it was late September. That's Count it. Count Matt it. meant your half birthday. So. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just, all right. <laughs> the half birthday. Oh, <laughs> unintroduced <laughs> fucking co host over there. And then uh, all the way in Long Beach, California, just like myself, you heard him. It's Kalen Bean. Going on. Hey, Kalen, we got a flick in today, too. Hey, Kalen, do? happy almost. All right. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm about six months you as got, well. I know you gotta get you gotta get close to somebody, Matt. I'm in November. I get I know, I know. You're next, Chris. Okay, cool. I was waiting for my almost. Um, all right, look, we got a lot of show today. Uh football's back. We are hot off uh, a presidential debate. Just kidding. Um, uh, but the we are, but um Kalen. Yes. I just looked at my fantasy football team lineup. We're in the same league, Kalen and myself. We are. My leagues. I just realized I have four quarterbacks. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. <laughs> you got a dollar back, dude. Dude, you I, crap. I, I have a whole dollar back. <laughs> there. Nice. Is there a I don't I don't understand fantasy football. I guess. Are you only supposed to play one quarterback? Like, you should have a backup. Team? Okay. You, it's a reasonable yeah. to have a backup so in case yours goes pull. down, but that's ridiculous. It may prove it for a tight It may end. prove brilliant. <laughs> It may because I'm taking away everyone yeah. else's quarterbacks, but yeah. Chris, you um, should just swap. I actually, I don't know if you could swap it in for a, yeah. a flex, but that gonna, would be the ultimate flex if you just. I no, you can't play, play two, quarterback at flex. I think, oh, yeah, okay. I think I am doing a flex. <laughs> uh, um, I think, I think I'm going to keep them, and we'll see how far I can get. Yeah. Um, so if anybody has the strategy, you did crush it this week, but Chris's strategy of fantasy football is fuck it. Here's the money now. As long my lineup is set, and that's about the end of my. Uh... It's true. I'm in. Look, I'm in three leagues. I don't even know who the four quarterbacks are, Caitlin. I just, it, <laughs> it's, um, I do it for the camaraderie. Kind of like this podcast. I enjoy the camaraderie. You got I like, one of your quarterbacks. Like the chats. You got to know one of your quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers is one of them. He was. On, right. He was benched though. I like him. I like him. Um, that was for the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It didn't didn't go well last night. Um. So, but I, I, if anybody has any, any strategic tips, I'll, I'll, I'll put up a, not pay attention to them. <laughs> yeah. Like, it seems like, it seems like it's working so far. I Chris went to the Chargers says, home Chris, opener. Chris says Justin Herbert, Aaron Rodgers, Brock Purdy, and Lamar Jackson. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're just, dude. you're just taking quarterbacks from other that people. Fucking, you got it, dude. <laughs> Play them all. I play them drafted. all. I think I'm drafted right. to be smart enough to balance my team, but not. No. I hate the ESPN app. I prefer Yahoo or Yahoo, whichever. Is it Yahoo? Yeah, right. What was it? I mean, it's How else definitely did you not it? Yahoo. So <laughs> yeah. Yahoo. I don't know. The way they do it, it's Yahoo. Yahoo. Yeah, that's actually the correct pronunciation. So. In the in the end of that uh, classic movie, Frequency. They mm. convinced the guy to invest in Yahoo, and he got. Oh, the, that's right. Paid. Yeah, Chris, how is it possible that you are you think it might be Yahoo? I don't know. I feel like especially I've, since you've seen Frequency. Yeah, but I I can recall the scene, but I can't recall the pronunciation. Mm. And uh, I now I know for sure. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know why I thought that, but uh, I knew it was it was one or the other. So, fifty percent mm-hmm. chance. Of getting it right or wrong. Um, anyway, I missed you guys. I missed Miss you too, Harry. buddy. There was oh, a wow. there's a big Apple event over yeah. recently, the iPhone 16. 
Yeah, I the iPhone know, 16 and 16 Pro. I know nothing about this Apple event. I, To be honest, since I stopped doing the Corolla show, I've been pretty disconnected with current events, news, any of the, the happenings. So Are you in the tech talk? All I know yep. is that it's the number 16. But whatever they did with the phone, any improvements, I know nothing. Mm. You're not going to be in line on day one at the Apple. No, I'm still going to be in line. I mean, I got to have oh, okay. a choice. Oh. But uh, I got to tell you, I, I watched I watched parts of this video because uh, I, I may or may not be in the market to upgrade my piece of shit iPhone X, and uh, I'm still not exactly sure what it's supposed to do. It says that it's all about artificial intelligence. Oh no! So now you one can, day. you know. Ask your phone to find a, an email that you forgot about, and it'll like pull the email up for you, and then it'll oh. rephrase it, and then it'll help That's you rewrite handy. the email. I, I guess I'm not really quite sure. To me, you get a better camera. And when I had my private tech talk session with Gary, he explained, you know, you get the you get the most recent version of whatever nonsense they're selling. So you're kind of future proofing it. I think it's, is the, the phrase that you used. I'm well. So, okay, well, hold on a second here. Let's 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 not let my advice for Matt be misconstrued as advice for anyone who's listening. I said for you, you should future proof it because the fact that you're still rocking an iPhone X is fucking bananas to me. So, as in an, in analyzing your upgrade patterns, if you're going to need this phone for six more years, I advise you to get the Pro as opposed to the 16 because that will be you know the phone that is viable for the longest. The 16 is basically a year behind and will probably stop working faster than a pro would. There you go. Look, I am Boom. about this whole AI text. AI. 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 AI Did because you guys see the, uh, the ad for perplexity the other day on Monday Night Football? Or I missed it. <laughs> yeah, there was a perplexity ad. It was uh, oh. Coach Harbaugh. He's trying to like answer questions and uh, he can't answer it. So he takes a drink of his perplexity water and then all of his answers are just AI generated. Oh, right now we're drinking this <laughs> stuff. See, this is what I'm worried about. Because then eventually, look, it all it really all began with all the predictive texting and responses. I mean, Gmail rolled that out to where it's like it it predicted my responses pretty accurately with the appropriate enthusiasm. Mm. The the ex well, most your emails are like points. nah man. Yeah. You know? We or good. Like, cool. Cool. Yeah, I don't that's what L. your emails usually are. I like, don't put so. the L in cool. Yeah. What why? You know what I'm saying? Why waste the keystroke? Yeah. It's I'm use it's the akinemy of motion that I'm <laughs> focused on. Okay. And and I want my keyboard to last. So yeah, um, much like your windshield wipers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm I'm looking into the longevity of my equipment. Now the predictive responses, it was alarming. I don't in the predictive texting, I still swipe the text, Gary. I don't know how that makes you feel. Um vexed. <laughs> and so the fact that now AI is just gonna type my emails out for me because it knows what I'm gonna say to Matt who then Matt's AI is just going to type back to me. Matt and I are really not going to be communicating with each other, but <laughs> our AI selves are really the ones that are going to be fostering a friendship. Have your AI oh, call my AI. Exactly. That's what it's going to be. And then they're going to hang out without us, and then they're going to they're gonna go to the bar after their shift and just vent about how you and me are just terrible people to work for, and they're going to they're gonna bond over that. Mm. Hey, speak for yourself. I've always been incredibly kind That's what to, I thought too, to <laughs> robots and artificial, you know, intelligences. So, Dude, yeah, Matt used to thank my car for handing him the seatbelt. I was uh, <laughs> oh, he's buckled me in. I was uh, having uh, I, I forget what was happening, but I was yelling about something. I don't know if I was what I was yelling about, but what was happening was it was Thursday. Siri all of a sudden decided sorry okay that, that's it. Oh. <laughs> do you know how many people in our audience you just did that to? i know i'm sorry i summoned <laughs> she who shall not be named that was a paranormal moment on, on an accident he's speaking and of lord voldemort right i in the midst of my yelling i just said shut the fuck up bitch and she doesn't like that theory, when you say that yeah sorry sorry don't don't 
said, that's not very nice. And I fucking went off the handle then. You're a phone. You do not have feelings. You are not something that needs to be dealt with tenderness. I was very upset about it. I think we just lost one of our many cell phone listeners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More than one possibly. Get them all out. Dawson. You should consider co- incorporating this into your stand-up, the, <laughs> the guy who doesn't know how Siri works, and try to tell the joke and have the phone keep going off in the middle of it. It was <laughs> actually Dawson, very I hilarious. Like I don't like when you speak to me. Way know. too involved, but yeah, yeah it's yeah. funny. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. You got to be polite. Matt's right. Matt had the right move. Yeah. No, I guess I should have. You sh- you absolutely should have. So. Oh. But I was like, you're a robot. I, I, was, I was actually treating it more like a human, which was the <laughs> funny thing. Like I'm allowing myself to get upset about this. And the whole point is it should, shouldn't. Anyway, it was funny, dude. Yeah. Um, um... What was that? Dude, I was some I would, fucking ghost in the machine right now. What is going on? on? But then I was like, oh, this is going to be too a little too much. Um, okay. So anyway, Gary, this iPhone 16. This is so as Dawson said, I'm going to be first in line for this thing. I just like my fancy football team. I auto draft my phones. So nice. whatever, yeah, it just I just well, get the newest one without even looking. Well. Not to uh, not to detour a little bit, but I'm going to go through it in the uh, order that Apple went through it, which is there are a few product announcements. One is there's a new Apple Watch. Uh, it's got a bigger screen. It's a brighter screen and it's thinner oh. and it comes in black. Then there's a new Apple Watch Ultra, too, which Chris has, I believe. Chris, you rocking your Apple Watch Ultra? Yeah. And thank you for noticing. You're um, welcome. I am rocking an Apple Watch Ultra. Uh I do have this band that came with like, that I got with it. It's the official Apple band. I will say something weird's been happening with it. Mm. Um, for the first four months that I had the watch, after about a week and a half, my band would develop a smell akin to the odor that you get when you're walking. Gary will relate to this when you're walking in a downtown city. And it's the urine of a, it's the old urine, uh, like in a stairwell, uh, that most likely made by either a drunk person or a homeless person, right? Mm, and that's yeah, just more likely the latter. So my watch would get that smell, my band, where I would have to soak it in dish soap and baking soda overnight, and then air dry it for a day. Wow. Because, I on it. yeah. So that was the that. J- that was Gen Theory too. Like, are you just peeing on your? And I think I notice if I was peeing on my own watch. Um, what do you think everyone thinks that? Everyone thinks they they do. There's no way I would totally know if I was peeing on my watch. And then there was this guy who'd been peeing on his watch for thirty years and had no idea. So it happens, man. Right. Uh, I've been paying attention to, uh, since the smell. I've been kind of paying. You've been paying attention. Is that what you just yeah. hear that? Did you guys yeah, just hear that? Yeah. <laughs> He's been peeing with intention. I've been peeing with intention by peeing yeah by paying watch. attention by peeing with intention, and I would so eventually I just got a new a new watch band. I couldn't take it anymore, and the new watch band was working great, but I ordered a size too big, and so I cut it with scissors, oh, like an adult small. <laughs> Sorry, I wish I got the adult small. I got, I got the, fr- I got the freaking large, Gary. I got the adult large. That is, um, that's too big. It was too big. It was too big, and so I cut it to about the size of the adult small. But when I cut it, it made the edges too jagged, and it was like digging in my arm and giving me like a weird rash because uh, it wasn't a, a good, a good bevel. And then so I put the old band back on. And it, I've been wearing it for about a month and a half now, and it has not smelled like urine. So maybe I have been peeing off my own. I have no other explanation. I've been living my life the exact same, except I just have, yeah. So you're now peeing with intention. I'm now, <laughs> I'm now pee, I really am now peeing with intention. Is it possible that you are sweating less than you were when you were wearing it? Uh, not with this heat wave. Yeah, not this week. 
Uh, definitely not this week. I I've been wearing. No, I, I wear my watch. Like I've worn it to the golf range and to uh, walking around. And yeah, when I sweat, I still sweat. I still I think I still sweat the same amount. So I doubt that's what it is. But um, but anyway. I'll, I will keep you updated if I get another urine smell. You guys are going to be the first to know. You two listeners. All right. This is what you sign up for. This is what you subscribe. This is why you tell a friend to find because you, you, you're on urine watch with literally urine watch uh, <laughs> with, with me. So, all right. Anyway, Gary, so this new Apple watch, I hope they got rid of the urine smell. So the new Apple watch ultra two is not new at all. It's the exact same thing, but now it comes in black. So yeah. that's exciting, I guess. If you're in the market for a black watch, it looks pretty cool. Um, then th it came it to AirPods. <laughs> so you guys probably know that there's a couple kinds of AirPods. There were the original AirPods, the ones with the long stems. And then they came out with the pros that have the little tips that fit in your ear. And they have since updated the AirPods. They were on, before yesterday, the third iteration of regular AirPods and the second iteration of AirPods Pro. They announced the AirPods 4, and there are two versions of them now. They're, they look a little bit more like the Pros with the shorter stems, but they don't have the uh, ear inserts, so they just sit in your ear. And they have one version that does not have uh, noise cancellation, much like the first AirPods, and they have a new version that does have active noise cancellation, which is pretty cool because no company's really been able to do that design without the tips. Um, and then they also updated the AirPods Max, I don't know if you guys have ever seen these out in the wild. I've seen those these... out in the wild with you. You used to bring them to work. Yeah, I used to wear them at work all the time. And, and then Gary, he would he would leave them in the in the we shared an office, and Gary would leave them in there, and then he would go do a podcast, but they'd still be on, and I would just hear the podcast blaring through his headphones. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely true. Chris used to leave his phone in random places around the studio, and then he would use his watch to make it ring. Which was equally I, so annoying. that might be the main function of my watch is just to find where I place my phone at the moment. <laughs> well, then I'm glad you got the most expensive version. <laughs> um, they, they so they updated the uh, AirPods Max, which had been on the market for like five or six years, and they changed absolutely nothing. They added USB C instead of Lightning for the charging, and that's all they changed. And they changed. They brought out some new colors. They so, were forced to do that too, weren't they? Uh, it wasn't like a decision. Didn't they have to change everything to USB-C now? Or is that just a Europe thing? It's a Europe thing, but I don't believe that it applies to headphones. It just, But everyone is going that direction. When they recently updated the AirPods Pro, they made the new version with the USB-C. Everything will eventually be USB-C, but there are still some holdouts, like their keyboards and their trackpads and stuff, and the Magic Mouse, those are all still lightning. Um, so overall, very boring. Like, not nothing Sounds really... really Nothing really worthwhile to talk about. And then it comes to the phones, which were the most boring part of the entire thing. What the heck? Basically. They can't improve it. They've perfected it. Isn't it's, every uh, Apple event at this point like this? I feel like every time they have an event, it's like, yeah, it's pretty much the same, except they did the camera a little better. Yeah, it's pretty much the same, <laughs> except they slightly tweaked this true. little thing. <laughs> mm, I mean, I, I guess for the iPhone, for the September events, Yes, that's usually very true. The one exception I can think of recently would be the keynote where they announced the Apple Vision Pro, which is obviously like a whole new product sector. So that one was a little bit exciting and interesting. They're still pushing that thing. I did not see it catching on. They, they, you didn't see it mentioned much in the keynote. So no, they're not really pushing it. I think they're going to start pushing it when they come out with the Apple Vision, the one that's not a pro, that'll be a lot cheaper, more like 1500 bucks, which is probably coming next year. Um. As far as the iPhones, if you have an iPhone 15 or 15 Pro, it's a largely iterative update. The one thing worth talking about is that both the Pro and the iPhone 16 are gaining a new button that we have never had on an iPhone before. It's on the right-hand side of your phone, beneath, sort of beneath where the um, lock button is for new modern iPhones. And that is going to be a capacitive button that you will use to open your camera. So you will have a dedicated camera button that you can click to open your camera and then take a photo. And it's also, when I say capacitive, that means that you can move your finger around on it and that it will like do things like zoom or oh. change the focus or change the aperture length. Like 
So yeah, it, as far as like camera upgrades, like that's really all there is to talk about. Like the camera button and that new section of it is really kind of the big headline. Everything else is, as Matt said, all about AI, but that's not shipping with the phones. The first, the first iteration of Apple intelligence is going to come out sometime in October. And I would not be surprised if we don't have all the stuff they talked about until the iPhone 18 or 17, sorry, 17. I'll wait. I'll wait. Yeah. I found so good, but thank so there you go. Very boring. That was, yeah, man. That's a tech talk though. That, bo- that was a good nice done. tech talk. Good job. I mean, an intro. I was nice and I'm glad I didn't have to watch the whole. Apple. And if anyone has, you know, more in the weeds, nerdy questions, tweet me. I'll, I watched the whole damn thing. So I know. <laughs> yeah. Any celebrities? <laughs> so enthusiastic. Uh, there was, there were, there were a few celebrities. They uh, showed how the weekend shot his latest uh, music video using the iPhone 16 pro. And so he was heavily featured for about five minutes while they talked about how cool, you know, the camera was and how much it like allowed them to do things that they would have never been able to do with an iPhone before. Cause it does shoot. There are a bunch of camera upgrades. Like it shoots 4k video at 120 frames per second. Like the camera updates are significant and the camera button is cool and is new, but that's really all there was to talk about from a hardware standpoint. And the software, they just didn't really talk about because they don't want to highlight the fact that it's not coming with the phone. They want you to buy a phone, you know, on launch day. And the sad truth of it is, is that all of the software features that this phone was purpose built for aren't shipping when the phone ship. Yeah. Huh. They don't have the software. They have concept of the software. Right. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, anyway, uh, look, we got comments. I, w- I do want to do a Shay and a Flick in this this episode because we rarely do them on the uh the first episode of the week and i want to i want to give the people what they want so let's do a couple comments and then we'll get into some seconds you guys down let's do it let's go all right these are our comments found um within our i'll I'll start with the facebook group uh thanks everybody for subscribing to our facebook group and joining it's free if you're not a part of it just go to facebook.com slash groups slash bobo boy army worldwide llc answer a few questions and we might let you in um very easy to join my favorite place on the internet okay this one is going to require a picture because uh alvaro zaragoza zaragoza he he uh, has an update to one of Matt's stories that he told recently. Remember, Matt talked about something. Uh, what, oh, I, oh my God! I'm so glad you're reading this. This was good. this yes, is this is yeah, this Matt. Is this, this is, is life changing. This is redemption for Matt. I think. Um, well, Matt was talking about how he was cut off basically from uh, alcohol for for a little bit while on a flight home from Europe, and but we really gave him a lot of flack because he was using the call service button to summon right. his flight attendant to bring him more beverages. Yeah, because I get it. You know, I get it's for emergencies, but also isn't the whole thing like it's a call button. It's if you need something, I know. you call we gave, him over. We gave Matt some some flack about it, but here I'm going to show you um, what Alvaro says. He says, catching up on some pod and Matt's airline story came up. I looked up and the sign is a button with a person bringing bring drink. <laughs> it may not be for emergency wow. after all. And if you look oh, wow. right here, yeah, the button there it is is a silhouette of a person <laughs> drink I believe, service. Yeah, I believe holding a beverage. Wow. I mean, it's they're not holding emergency the equipment. Easter, could the be, Easter egg in this is it, fucking fantastic, wow. Chris. It could be an oxygen mask. Maybe they're trying to help. Oh. It's an it is a cup. It could be a urine That's sample. Amazing. It could That's be amazing. Yeah. It could be anything, really. Oh, Chris. <laughs> Show the other tab. Show the other tab. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Okay. So uh, anyways, if you look at this picture, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's redemption for Matt. Uh, yeah. Redemption has never tasted so sweet. Yeah. So, um, or it yeah. looks so good. There you go. Years. I guess you can use it. For- <laughs> if, anybody- <laughs> if anybody else uses-, uses that button for drink, I guess it's okay. I, I, I shall no, it's not. No, it's not. We here at the water cooler do not abide by that. I, Matt is a monster. I, not only Matt do I abide, I'm going to do it again. Now I feel totally vindicated in this. Yeah. No, Matt, you're a monster. Stop doing that. 
Wh- why? Because there's just yeah, there's some things back. that you just don't just do. Walk, just walk back and get your drink. Or you, but I, what I usually do is I walk back and get it, or I wait for them to come around, but I walk back, order it, and then they usually say, we'll bring it to you at your seat. So they don't, they don't even make you carry it. But the, yeah, the light... I mean, I personally am I of like the opinion. I like your style, though. I like your guts. I do, too. But I'm personally I mean, of the opinion that it. that is a large contributing factor to why you got the attitude that you got. True. Mm-hmm. How many times did you call it? I only called this bitch once. I mean, All respect right. on women. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 wow. Uh... Uh, all right, Philip Anderson writes, at large functions, what are foods that you look forward to? I've got about 30 people coming over, Oof. and I'm looking for some good ideas. It's not kid-centered. I guess Queso. Queso, baby. K- oh, Gary's just going straight for dip. Get I, I, I am. Get I'm, I, dip went over, I went over to producer Laura Lee's house for lunch recently, and wouldn't you know, she had a little crock pot of hot queso going. Oh, I've, I've never yeah. been happier. And all if right. you have people over, you dip, I dip, we dip. Damn it's right, baby. Wonderful, it's a wonderful experience. I got to say, I know it's classic, but pigs in a blanket, man. Sure. Always so a That's like one of the only times that you can actually get that food is in a group party setting. It, I, I love pigs in a blanket. I'll have them anytime. I, it's my, one of my favorite appies, especially for Super Bowl Sunday. It's, it is the, the, it reigns supreme at any party I go to. Um, it is hard for me to convince people to let me bring them because it, it's not classy enough. People that are just, they're just I, jealous you, that their dishes are, are going to get <laughs> you know, left behind and get cold because people will be just eating and hovering around the well, fucking sausage plate. Well, let's well, just Matt, clear one thing up here, Chris. If you ever show up on my doorstep with pigs in a blanket, you're getting a hug and a beer. Because like that, that. nothing would make me happier than How seeing fresh pigs. How can I? Is there a way to class them up? Yeah, you use like freaking like everything, <laughs> like shape or quilt. something. Maybe put a, on like put a, a, a quilt. <laughs> Classes anything. <laughs> up. You know, a comforter. Pigs in a comforter. Ah, uh, yeah. Give them a little more warmth. A little. Yeah. yeah. Go. Go down. Don't do alternative. Yeah. yeah. I, I look. I love pigs in a blanket. Um, I just look and and Philip, the 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 writer of this comment, charcuterie is always nice. Just sure. a sh- charcut, just a charcuterie. That's right. Dawson had the correct answer for this question on the Facebook post. I just like to put that. What out. did he write? What did I write? <laughs> you, don't even... you want me to say it? Yeah, lumpia. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. lumpia. Sure. Very strong. I will also, go anywhere. Also... I will go anywhere there is lumpia. Also in the Dawson wheelhouse, a nice freshly made, not no store bought, a freshly made guacamole, strong. Never go wrong with chicken wings. That too, Never go that's, wrong. That's, with that's my wings. number one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Gary, Gary's just all about the dip. I am. Yeah. If if you go to a party and there's like three or four different dips, I mean, it's going off. What is, that's what's, a fucking, that's a, what's the best vessel though? Is it is it the tortilla chip? Well, there's two different vessels. One, the tortilla chip for sure, but I like, you know, like a, like a, almost like a sourdough bread bowl with like a kind of artichoke, spinach artichoke dip. That also, sort of thing. super I, strong. Yeah. One way to make sure that I'll never dip, have a lot of dip. Mm. <laughs> Same. That's, that's, that, that's that where down. Gary draws the line. Um, Kaylin, if you see a sourdough bread bowl dip at a party, how soon before you break that bowl <laughs> and you start? And you get a piece of the bowl. I guess that's uh, not. They don't normally put it in a bread bowl, but if it was it, out there, it would be a, a instantly. I would instantly break it. You know, for no, you it. Can't that's what it's made. It. That's what it's made for. Yeah, the first, get some of the dip. That's no, very you, like August of you. If you just if you're the first person walking, <laughs> you just, no, 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 yeah. no, you gotta, you gotta have. I don't want a, it to get cold, baby. I gotta eat it while it's hot. There's you usually have a portion. there's usually pieces of bread <laughs> that are served next to it. They'll usually break up like a lid. You can't break the bowl until, until the bread is bread. gone. That's dry bread. When I want the wet stuff. Yeah, but it's 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 uh it's uncouth. It's uncouth to break. Yeah, you gotta the bowl you gotta wait for all that dip before, to be out of there before you start going yeah, for the the surrounding yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. You got to see some daylight before you start ripping off the top edge. Mm-hmm. 
That makes that see that's good dip etiquette. Dip de- 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 etiquette like in there, Matt. Um, that's my favorite character in The Godfather. Dip de- etiquette. Dip de- etiquette. Eric Jenks. He says, "Hey, all my bobos, I'm looking for a little help. I'm in the market for new athletic shoes, and I'm a wide-footed hobbit." Mm. So you <laughs> and- go barefoot. Any brands that like footed that like footed people prefer Puma. Stop making my favorite shoe. Thanks. And uh, and I'm looking in the comments here. And he works at a bar, so he's on his feet a lot. He's going to and fro a ton with from behind the bar, getting all the wonderful liquors uh, to make Matt's cocktail. Mm-hmm. So we have to uh, figure out what, what's a good shoe. I do have an answer because I also am a wide footed guy. In fact, I just started wearing wides and I love them. Um, Is that a brand? No, no. It's just like shoe companies make like wide versions of shoes. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I have no idea. Cause my, I've been muffin topping over the soles of my shoes my whole life. And now I feel supported. Is that the medical uh, term for it or? Yeah. It is. Oh. Yes. Yeah. You can, you can look it's in uh, Drew, Drew will tell you. Now, I have an interesting question for Jenks. I mean, Jenks is one of our most hardcore fans. He's always at the meetup with his lovely wife. You know, they're 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 big fans. Would he be overcome with happiness or dread if Matt walked into his establishment? I I would it would say it'd have to depend on if Matt had the sandwich in the refrigerator first <laughs> or not. Yeah. Yeah, because it's so like, Matt, you know, it also on one hand. On- Here's some FaceTime with one of your favorite podcasters. On the other hand, you're going to spend the next 15 minutes making a Ramos gin fizz. Yeah, we're not going to have much FaceTime. All right. And I'll Matt, be watching you, you Don't sir. you like Don't you like walking into bars five minutes before last call? Isn't that like your favorite thing to do? <laughs> what the fuck? Sure. sure. Like really yeah. Good. Yeah, so Matt loved that. Yeah, so Eric, uh, yeah, five minutes before last call, Matt will go in. And he'll order some crazy cocktails. Um, so. Don't put it on the menu if you don't want an order. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I still, I was telling my friends about the best bar experience I've ever had, Doss, was with you in New York and where we closed down a bar at past 4 a.m. Because 4 a.m. is last, is when bars close over there, right? Right. Yep. Um, yeah, and Dawson and I closed down a bar and the bartenders liked us so much that they let us hang out with them. And we just stayed till the sun came up, smoking we, cigarettes. We were there at the 6 a.m. smoking cigarettes and still drinking beers. Yeah, I got to smoke inside. I didn't think I'd ever do that in my life. Yeah, um, I that was, that was actually yeah. I remember that, dude. I still have a, I have a picture of you, me, and Lynch from that night. Yeah. So anyway, I I, I think about that every once in a while just because of how epic it was to just go to New York at a bar yeah. for the first time and boom, that's what happens. And that must happen at all New York bars, right? Um. All right. Uh. Look, let's uh, let's. End the comments there. I do want to get to some Patreon ones. We'll do that during the Patreon show because uh, I love our Patreon subscribers. Um, but we do have two seggies I want to hit before the end of this this episode. So I will uh, end it. End the comments there. No outro because you only get that on the Patreon episodes as well. Wow. I know. Comments time. Dawson, what are you doing? No, you Finish can... up your whiskey and your cocaine in the bathroom. Dawson's favorite line. Um, all right. Well, look, Kalen, you're going to flick something. Matt, you're going to talk about food. We just talked about food. So let's flick something and then we'll get back into the food. So uh, let's go. Mm. You know one thing. So last night I watched, I was happy to see that it was on there. I had no idea that it was on streaming. Uh, Furiosa, Mad Max yeah, Saga. Nice. Yeah, came out in May. You can stream it now on Max. Written and directed by George Miller. Stars Anya Taylor-Joy, Chris Hemsworth, and Tom Burke. It's Big two man. and a half hours long. Whoa. $168 million budget. Made $172 million at the box office. So that's not good. Uh, it has a 90% with the critics and an 89% with the audience on Rotten Tomatoes. And it is a prequel to Mad Max Fury Road following Charlize Theron's character Furiosa from a child into a 20-something-year-old. I don't know why, but I wasn't like particularly excited for this movie when it came out. Fury Road is fucking amazing. I love that movie so much. Uh, again, it's George Miller again. I thought it's weird marketing. 
I feel like maybe they thought it didn't need too much marketing, like kind of just the name it would sell itself. I think Mad Max is its own thing now from the, you know, Road Warrior on pretty much. And anytime George Miller puts out one of these, you know exactly what you're going to get. And it's. Yeah, Yeah, but on the flip side of that, they marketed the fuck out of that new Alien movie which is similarly like its own thing. Like it's got its own canon. I, well, I think the alien movie at least had a bit of a twist because I think I haven't seen it, but it seemed like they went back to the original alien where it's kind of more of a horror movie than it is an action movie. And I think that that was kind of the first time they took that turn with that franchise since the original. So it kind of made sense why they would do that with the marketing on that one to get that point across. Um, but yeah, Ani Taylor Joy and Hemsworth, they're both great. Everyone's great. It just for some reason I just didn't really care too much when it came out in the theater. Hey, I'll see it on streaming, whatever. Um I so I didn't really have much expectations going into it, which is the best way to go into any movie, as okay. I've said before. Uh no real expectations, but again, the first one is just so good. It's so good. From the second that movie starts, it is just all gas, no breaks. Ooh. The entire fucking time it is so fucking epic that movie it slows down like a little bit when they get into that swampland you know which is like an hour into the movie and even still they pick like right back up pretty fucking quickly uh this one i will say is definitely not as intense as that first one uh it has a fuckload of action in it and it's all very exciting but it loses that like just non-stop feel that made uh fury road so great uh, it's it's a fun movie. It's for sure a fun movie. I enjoyed it. Acting's great. The return of the characters from Fury Road. Uh, they get into some of the other wastelands, which is nice too. Gas Town and the Bullet Farm. That's all fun. I like that. There was a couple moments in it, though, that didn't make sense to me either. A couple questionable decisions by the characters and some like really lazy setups for kind of important pivotal scenes. I was like, well, how did they go from there to there? And why are they there? It's just a couple lazy moments I was a little disappointed with. Um, But like I said, it's a very fun movie. It seems about as well made all around as the first one. Uh, It's got a lot of chase scenes, but nothing like that first one again, where there's like just hundreds of cars, pure chaos for like 25 minutes straight. Uh, So I was a little disappointed they didn't have something that epic in it again. Um, so yeah, you know, a couple more breaks throughout, but perfectly serviceable, I'd say. Um, I didn't expect it to be better or even as good as the first one. So going into it with that, I was pretty happy with it. Mm. Uh, I gave it flickable 8.4 out of 10. Ah. Hey. All right. Maybe all right. I'll, I'll weird without the outro. That's good. And I do. I know it is weird without the outro. <laughs> and that oh. was flicking the beam. Thank you, oh and And um, by the way, I, I meant to tell Eric Jenks about the shoes. A6. I'm a big A6 guy. Oh, I, I'm, a hu- I'm a huge A6 I guy, love but, A6. but I got I a think, thin foot, so I don't know how the wides Oh, I, th- I think they just support all feet, because um, the most comfortable shoes I've ever had. I've worn A6 pretty much only A6 A6 for the past decade. You, mm-hmm. have been, you have been an A6 guy yeah. for, for a long time. But like, if you want a comfortable work shoe, I feel like the best moves to probably go on like a nurse's Reddit forum and ask them. I feel like well, if anybody yeah, knows the most comfortable shoe with a nurse. Shoes, and then make There's, sure they're, one of they're your clicky work knows that you're wearing them. You know, they're all, you know, they're all about the hokas and then yeah. the uncloud. They start wearing wow. scrubs to work, too. It sucks that only nurses get to do that. That probably be good you know, for a bar. Scrubs are pretty awesome, dude. Dirty I just up the start scrubs, wearing yeah. scrubs every day. I feel like you work in a workplace where you could pull that off, Dawson. I might be able to. Yeah. I love how Kalen's like, yeah, that sounds good. Kalen used to come to our work in PJs. Yes. So, I mean, I feel like he's beaten oh, yeah. the, the scrub. I said for a bartender, design. okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm not okay. getting fucking drinks spilled sure, sure. all over me at Corolla Studio. Well, all right, let's... back when that Mangria was on tap. <laughs> Those are the days. It did stain. Right. It did stain. All right, let's do a quick birthday shave before we get out of here. Oh, no! What type of foods might we hear of today? What, what might be the price? What might, might be the venue? venue? So let's find out. I'm it's not the guy right now. Hi, hi, Matt. What's on the menu? Uh, well, I got to start by saying, you know, last week on the podcast, I was talking about uh, people celebrating, decorating for Halloween. Yeah. It's just too early. Too early. Uh, 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 you know, whatever I said. I got, I got some eggnog on my face. Because I started my birthday weekend by going to a Christmas bar. And let me tell you, it was a fucking jolly good time. It was a brand new bar that just opened up in South Austin. There is a legendary dive bar 
in central Austin called Lala's. It's qu- it's Christmas all year long there. And they opened Lala's South Pole. Not too far from my spot. It's about 10 minutes away. So uh, we enjoyed lots of fantastic uh, Christmas-themed cocktails like uh, the Jingle and Juice. <laughs> that was definitely probably my favorite one. I like that. Uh, of course, the, the South Pole Sour, Santa's Little Helper. It, it was just it was a delightful way to start at the birthday weekend. We went out to a great Cajun restaurant after that. It had some stuffed catfish. Uh, but the real celebration, what's that face, Gary? Ew. Feeling catfish? You had stuffed catfish by choice? Dude, stuffed catfish with crab and oh, fucking now we're shrimp talking. with like a shrimp cream sauce on top over yep. rice. Yeah, oh, my too. God, okay. dude. It was legit. It was yeah. so fucking good. Okay. I'm very glad to hear that. It's, I eat all know, that. I'm, Gary I'm also hates seafood, as... so that's probably his worst Yeah, I'm on the there. record as being basic. That just, I don't know. Dude, I, I can't. I would I, love to I would love to get the leftovers and microwave that at work. That sounds I sure you would. <laughs> really good, um, I have um, been but, to a Christmas bar in Appleton, Wisconsin, and I, I support the Christmas bars. They're just super fun any time of the year. Yeah, I think because it's a new place, Everybody on the staff was uh, was super friendly. Uh, but what I was going to say is that normally for my birthday, I, we go out for like a lavish dinner. But because we just had a uh, lavish European vacation, I decided instead to just invite pretty much everybody that I know in Austin to come join me at a couple bars, uh, Armadillo Den and Moon Tower Saloon, which I took Dawson to uh, when he was out in Austin. These outdoor spaces, live music at both spots. And I will say a lot of people turned out and it was just like a really amazing way to uh, to ring in the big 4-0. So it feels a little surreal to be 40 now, but uh, it was a great birthday weekend. And uh, that's what's on the menu. Yay. Hey. And happy, happy belated, my dude. I did. Yeah, glad glad you glad you got out and had fun. Did you get drunk? Oh yeah. Is that really a question, Chris? Oh yeah. <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah. Sunday was a recovery day. Did you take a shot? Did you take shots? No, but I had no a lot shots. of cocktails. Oh. Lots of cocktails. Um. All right. Well. Anyway. Oh, by the way, Keon, I saw Interstellar. Did no, you, you did really? Not. For the first time. Yeah. I watched. What? I watched on, the your, on your bury phone? the lead? Huh? No, I watched it on. I watched it on tv i watched i watched Start to the, finish i watched that first <laughs> yeah <laughs> let me uh, let me tell you okay we're about we're getting ready for bed and i'm like i'll start interstellar i'm just gonna start it i'll just watch the first 15 minutes it was so good i, I watched the first half hour <laughs> and then uh and i turned it off and i went to bed i just could not stop thinking about it to where i told jen jen you gotta watch this movie with me you got it. Like it's so good. I will rewatch the first thirty minutes with you, and uh, and then we'll watch it together. She's like, great. So I turn it on, and she's just on her phone during the first. And I'm just like, no, you got it. You missed that. You missed this part. Like <laughs> it's dusty because there's a blight. Like you know, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to. T- their okra's gone. There's no more okra. Um, you know, it's funny. The same exact thing happened to me with Amy when I tried to show her Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> it's like you gotta watch this movie. You're it's so good. This, oh, this yeah. is gold. Um, but then, yeah, God, that there are some parts of that movie which is like, whew, it was heavy. Yeah. And that it, it, that that scene of him just Matt. It's a gif, but just Matt McConaughey just bawling his eyes out while watching this this screen. Yeah. Oh man, that was rough. That, but anyway. Oh, yeah. anyway. Uh, great movie. So, a oh, funny for... tweet oh, the I'm... other day that said. I'm kind of sad. I can't make fun of you for not seeing it anymore. Uh, that's why. That's why I watched it. Really. Yeah. I said know. something you like did watch Hollywood. But go ahead, Doss. Said Hollywood had collectively spent billions of dollars to save Matt Damon. <laughs> like, and in Interstellar, it's one of the one of the examples that was used. How excited! Yeah. I didn't know there's he was so be many here. movies where Matt Damon needs to be saved. I had no idea there were yeah. so many of them. Yeah, the Martian. He's always he's always in peril. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you're right. Hollywood has spent way too much money, or I've spent, and I've may have spent way too much money and time to watch him get saved. But, you know, it it was damsel in distress. Maybe it's Damon in distress now. That is the new modern phrase. Damon, a Damon in distress. Uh, all right, look, we got to record the Patreon episode. So now why don't we go around the horn, get our plugs in, and we'll go do that. So I will start all the way in NoHo CA. Mr. Mike Dawson, 
what do you suggest everybody check out? Uh, I'm going to be doing a show in Santa Barbara on um, Friday, September 27th. Um, and I can do a 20 minute set. So uh, just follow me on Dos Angeles. And um, I'll let you know about that. Maybe you come to SB party a little bit. What day? Uh, September 27th. Uh, I'll be there right the first. I'll be there the weekend before. Nice. Uh, definitely go out there. Definitely go out there. Yeah. Um, Matt, what about you? I worked on a true crime show, and one of those episodes is available to watch on your television set. It's called Killer Relationship, and it's season three, episode four. The episode is called Body in the Bayou, and it's one of two episodes that I helped produce, and I'm very proud of it, and uh, it'd be cool if you guys check that out. Body in the Bayou. And uh, yeah, Matt... Matt's been working. Matt's a freaking TV guy now, everybody. So, uh, good job, well, up. yeah, congratulations, man. Um, Gary, so would you, uh, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash water cooler. We, uh, we do a whole nother episode of this show every single week. And then once a month, we watch a movie together and talk about it. Um, Chris just picked a terrible one for the last <laughs> one. But I'm quite quite confident that someone, Mike Dawson, will redeem himself and you know save Chris's blunder. But uh, yeah, patreon.com slash watercooler, all kinds of stuff, including our uh, our Molo Money meetup that we referred to earlier that Jenks and his wife always show up for. So all kinds of fun over there. Check it out. Can confirm. And uh, yeah, we watched The Spectacular now. Dawson talked about his flask story in ACS. So definitely check out that podcast. Um, the movie's not nearly as bad as Gary's making it out to be. But how funny is it that I made us all watch The Spectacular Now, and then I went on by myself to watch Interstellar. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, what about you? I would like to m remind everyone of the last time I went to Starbucks and got a medium cold brew coffee, and it came out to $5.20. Which Are you doing? First, are you gonna uh, do the cup of coffee? It's a it, cup of coffee. Our Patreon <laughs> is less than a cup of coffee. I can't believe cold brews cost that much anymore. I will not go to Starbucks anymore. It's ridiculous. So again, you're getting a lot, a lot more bang for your buck uh, signing up for that Patreon. But also check out Just Fooling About. We got Eric Roberts on this week. It was good. It's good. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And then uh, as for me, yeah, subscribe to Patreon. I'm playing a tandem on the Saturday in Long Beach. And I think that's love of God, it. boy. Plug your Insta. Oh, follow me at Chris Loxamana one. Oh, I mean the the band's Instagram is <laughs> at Jesus. Loxy. It's been like two fucking <laughs> years. I've been trying to say <laughs> this kid. Music. Uh, All right, I stepped on it. L A X I music. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, all right. That'll do it for Water Cooler. We'll see you later this week for Patreon. We love you. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>